The operator of the crippled nuclear plant in Fukushima has agreed to pay compensation to the relatives of a farmer who killed himself after the 2011 disaster. Tokyo Electric Power Company will pay the family several hundred thousand dollars. Shigekiyo Kanno killed himself on his farm near the Fukushima Daiichi plant three months after the accident. He left a note on a wall that read, if only there were no nuclear plant. Kanno had complained that he wasn't able to ship his milk because of the accident. His wife and two sons sued TEPCO for compensation. The utility was planning to fight the case in court. But the two sides reached an agreement. It included a confirmation that TEPCO would not have to apologize in the settlement papers. Kanno's wife issued a statement saying she is not satisfied with the terms, but she decided to go along with them because life has been so hard after losing her husband. She said she wants her children to have a peaceful life again as soon as possible. Japan's government has unveiled its first guidelines for evacuation shelters in case of volcanic activity. Japan's government has unveiled its first guidelines for evacuation shelters in case of volcanic activity. This follows last year's deadly eruption on Mount Ontake when dozens of climbers died. The shelters would help protect people from flying rocks. The guidelines say shelters must be able to withstand the impact of projectiles of up to 10 centimeters across at a speed of more than 300 kilometers an hour. This requires the shelter's roof and walls to be made of more than 20 centimeter thick reinforced concrete. Officials say the proposed shelters will not protect from larger rocks or lava flows. According to the guidelines, covering existing wooden cabins with special fiber could accomplish the task. We have a lot of private mountain cabins, so it is a big challenge for municipalities to reinforce them. Debris killed many climbers near the crater of Mount Ontake when it suddenly erupted in September last year because they had nowhere to hide. As of October 2014, only 12 of the 47 most active volcanoes in Japan had shelters. Japanese research whaling vessels have left a port in western Japan for an expedition to the Antarctic. This marks the first time the country's fleet will have caught whales in the Antarctic Ocean since last year, when the International Court of Justice ordered Japan to halt its whaling activities. Two vessels left port in Shimonoseki City, Yamaguchi Prefecture, on Tuesday. They're expected to conduct their whaling activities from late December to early March. In March 2014, the International Court of Justice ruled that Japan's whaling program in the Antarctic Ocean did not qualify as scientific. The court said Japan should refrain from granting any further permits for it. The Japanese government announced a revised program last month. The new plan is much smaller and calls for capturing only minky whales and reducing catches to 333, about one-third the previous number. The population of this species is large, and Japan is aiming to commercialize minky whaling in the future. <laughs> the Japanese fisheries minister says Japan will continue to make efforts to obtain the understanding of the international community. <laughs> the whaling practices this time are based on international law and are indispensable for collecting scientific data to control whale resources. <laughs> Australia and New Zealand have issued statements criticizing Japan, and the anti-whaling group Sea Shepherd has warned Japan of further obstruction to its fleet. When the fish all die and the legs catch fire, will it be worth it then? And when the cancer rate's 90% or high, will it be And when the 
there's no more fighting Cause there's no more spoils Will it be worth it then? If not, if not, what will it take To make you change your mind? What kind of sign would convince you that Oh, <laughs> 